So, wow, Australia get it right at the end. 19 points to 20 in terrible conditions in Buenos Aires. Argentina will feel they should have closed that game out, and they probably should. Australia, for a lot of that first half, were pretty awful. Then they burst into life around half time and played some really good rugby, actually, in bad conditions. And then they couldn't get out of their half. And it looked like their basics, their kicking game, their catching game was going to cost them. In the end, it didn't. So I think it's about honours even. Did Australia's tactics really match the conditions? Not so sure there, but let's get into this game. And the beginning of this game is pretty awful, to be honest, because first touch from both sides are a knock on. Tom Wright, who does great stuff and appalling stuff, does a terrible slice kick. Then Malia drops the first high ball, and it's probably the worst skill start you could see to a game. A lot was needed from Taniella Tupu, the returning tight head for Australia, and he worked really hard. Some decent stuff, and he wins a penalty from the first scrum, and the Australian scrum was pretty good. Bell and Tupu. Definitely a bit of an upgrade there in the propping stakes, I'd say. In the first 10 minutes, Australia rolled through a lot of phases, indeed 27 in one of their first attacks. But what they don't do is get over the gain line at the beginning of this first half. And Lolosio is forced to kick again and again and largely pretty rubbish kicks. One too far over the dead ball line, another one chipping the ball away and they lose 60 metres twice in a row. There's a penalty straight away, 3-0. So one visit, quick points for Argentina. Aussies kind of battering away against a bit of a brick wall. Australia's attacking is pretty sharp, ball in hand. Tupu carrying, tipping the ball on. But again, Lolaseo for a third time kicks away the ball completely to nothing and they lose that 60 metres once again. And then we get a try for Gonzalez. Again, very quick visits for Argentina. Lolasio compounds his bad kick with a bad pass, takes it far too close to the Argentinians, which is intercepted. They get a five-metre driving line out, very tidy, very easy. Gonzalez goes over, good kick, and straight away, there it is, 10-0. And at this point, I'm thinking, do you consider taking off Lolasio right there and then? Ben Donaldson is a good kicker. His basics are probably better. Lolasio's instinctive attacking game is probably better, but in these conditions, considering that start, did Joe Smith consider taking him off? In the end, he didn't, and it actually paid off on the very last play when Lolasio broke away. But anyway, surely he'd have been thinking, have I made a terrible mistake? On 17 minutes, Corombetti with a brain dead tackle in the air, and Corombetti is that sort of player. I call him the human missile because he flies into everything. Sometimes it's amazing, and sometimes it's an absolute liability, tucking his arms in, shoulders first, that sort of thing. But it seems to be that Australia are gifting Argentina the game in the first 20 minutes. On 18 minutes, a brilliant athletic line-out take from Gonzalez, and Australia just fancy giving Argentina more presence. Tupu coming around the side of a mall, and the Argentina launch play is pretty good. They're making gain line. They're looking the better team as Australia press the self-destruct mode as they try and run the ball out of their own 22 in terrible conditions. Just no chance. Not sure what they're doing. A few times Australia makes some terrible decisions, although in the end they do manage to get the win. The Argentinian line-out is working well, and to be fair, Argentina were getting the bounce of the ball. When it was bouncing around, it was bouncing to them quite literally, and their attack was building nicely. But luckily for Australia, they have some really sharp turnover guys there. Tizano is so laser sharp on the jackal penalty, and he gives much-needed respite a couple of times. Then on 25 minutes, the first slice of good fortune for Australia, as it's Gaggio, the prop, going off his feet, in a ruck, they get a line out 50 metres out, and it's a really good launch play. Tizano again, who is everywhere, a lovely pop to a huge line for Bobby Valentini, who just sits down Kremer with a massive hit. Then it's a bit laboured on the phases, but then a really killer line, inside liner to Tom Wright, and Tom Wright can do this sort of thing in attack. He breaks the line, Gordon supporting, it's a really nice try. So it's 10-7. And every time Australia do something good, it seemed like they would drop that restart. This time, Wilson dropping the restart cold from that try. 
and then Argentina get to batter away in the Australian 22. The Australian defence is pretty solid, but clear hands on the ground from the new centre, Stewart, who had a bit of a mixed game, some good hands, some good tackling, but also some bad drops and this penalty here. In the battle of the box kicks, it's Bertrano that's beating Gordon, but another good jackal penalty saves the day again for Australia, this time Angus Bell, who had a decent game. And then just before half-time, Australia start to find their attack. They're finding half holes. They start mixing up their lines. It's looking really sharp. Bell, Wilson involved. They win another penalty. It's kickable but tricky and Lolisio pushes it just wide and they really could have dealt with that. So it's 13-7 at half-time and Australia actually continue their purple patch. Argentina start the half with simple runners. Quick ruck ball looks pretty good, but that Australian defensive line is seriously strong, forcing knock-ons. Then they're a little unlucky to get a technical scrum penalty, so they actually go further behind 16-7, but they're playing better. Thunderous defence. Bell with one booming shot that ultimately wins a 5-metre scrum for Australia, and it's a brilliant chance to score. But just a terrible decision. They have this huge open side. They decide to go blind and it's literally like a metre or two and they get pushed into touch. Uh, Wilson picks and goes and gets pushed into touch. So just a shocking decision there from a great position and some good defence. But Australia are playing better. Their phase attack is a lot better. So much more deception. Icky Tau with some great strength to bump off and spin round a couple of poor Argentinian tackles. Another big run from Bobby Valentini continues the momentum. They keep going forwards and forwards and crash over the line. Good try, 16-14, so they're playing pretty well. Angus Bell again, that impressive match, this time winning an important scrum penalty against Bayo. And Tizano follows up with another razor-sharp tackle. Boy, that guy is so quick onto the ball. And they're in another good attacking position. Good launch play from Icky Tau once again, but Stewart drops the ball really badly, he has it in his hands, then he drops the ball really badly, but Grondona jumps across the line, so they actually get the lead. 16-17, they probably deserve the lead for really picking up their game, but Argentina can't go through that multi-phase attack like they did earlier in the game. The game is super close, the conditions just get worse and worse, and it's a day for playing in the opposition half with long kicks, but that's not really Lolisio's natural game. And a couple of times he just is desperate to run the ball out of his own half. He throws one terrible dead duck pass to Nick Frost, gifting possession to Argentina, and Argentina go into what looks like their match-winning 10 minutes of the game as they camp in Australia's half. Excellent carry off the base of the scrum from number eight, Gonzalez. Nick Frost is completely daydreaming and doesn't spot uh, Gaggio, who picks and bursts over the line to win the match, but loses it over the line. So that was a massive moment. Either side could have won this game, to be honest. But at this point, Argentina do have the momentum. And Corin Betty, as I said, the human missile can be a liability, tucks his arms and all that sort of thing. And he plays the scrum half which gives a penalty, six metre line out, big chance, shifted drive from the front to the back. Australia do well to stop it, but they batter away at the line, get a penalty, big decision. They go for the kick, nice kick from Albanos, who is on now. So they take the lead, 19-17. Argentina have been better on those restarts, for sure, makes a big difference. Then the finisher is on, Augustin Creevy, the veteran hooker. The problem is, though, he has to go onto the flank, They've run out of subs. That definitely didn't help. And the catching game is again punishing Australia. Lolisio again with another mistake. Can't take a high ball. It looks like the game is gone. But then Lolisio gets what he wants. Some broken play. His eyes light up and he gets around the edge with brilliant pace. Tries to free Jorgensen, the winger. He can't hold the pass, but Australia are on the attack. Finally in the Argentinian half. Haven't been there for a good 15 minutes. A penalty goal or a drop goal is going to win it. Five metres in front of the post and Argentina give away a killer ruck penalty. Easy kick, 1920, final act of the game. So there it is, Australia get it done right at the death. Argentina will be kicking themselves at home in bad conditions. They should be backing themselves. Their kicking and catching game was better, but they couldn't put that game away right at the end. Big win for Australia, just a big moral boost, to be honest. They're going to have to think about some of their tactics for sure. But anyway, pop down those comments below what you thought of that game. Like, subscribe if you're into these sorts of match reports, and I'll catch you next time.